Hey everyone, welcome to The Horror Show. I'm Cecil Laird. I mean Fuego here. Jack Aaron. And we are here to do a review of a movie that you guys can't really see right now. Nope. Uh, it's one that we were lucky enough to see. And uh, it's one that you might have an opportunity to see if you check the tour dates, but all of that Lager. lead up says that uh, we got to go see Victor Crowley. <laughs> Uh, yeah, so... Adam Green, Adam returning Green's to his, uh... Fourth Hatchet movie. And that is something he made very clear right at the front. This is not a reboot. This is the fourth in the series. This is a straight sequel. Despite just happens the, to be ten years later. Yeah, despite reports to the otherwise, like, circulating all through the horror yeah. sites, which is weird, so... Where Gee, because the they've never got anything wrong before. No, they're, they're infallible. <laughs> Praise uh, be to bloody disgusting. No. What? <laughs> Don't ever sarcastic. fucking say that. Um, anyway, uh, we're going to talk about this like usual. Uh, we'll go over our overall thoughts. Thoughts on the uh, story, the acting, the effects, all of that good stuff, and uh, the music we need to mention as well. Hey. Uh, but the overall thoughts, for me, uh, I enjoyed this movie. I thought hey. it was a really fun return to form after such a long time away from the series. It was great to have um, Adam come back, and it was great to have Victor Crowley come back, and it was just a lot of fun to see him doing what he does best, um, hacking and slashing. So, I had a really great time with it. Fuego? As did I. I actually laughed a lot more in this one than I did in the first Hatchet movie. I haven't seen two and three, so unfortunately I don't have the complete gauge of the franchise like I would, but uh, this gentleman is adamant about me finally rewatching those, especially with giving a little more context now. Or so watching them. Watching them. So rewatching. <laughs> Derps! It's late. We just got back from a Q&A that went a lot more extensive than we were anticipating, but it was a lot of fun. Great, mm -hmm. great time at this screen. If you can find tickets still available, seek them out. Mm-hmm. Dirk? I had a lot of fun with it. It was, I've only seen the, the first one as, as well, like Jaime, and uh, I, you know, I certainly laughed a lot more um, this time around, and uh, there was a lot of great comedic actors in it too, so mm -hmm. we'll get to that, but uh, you know, I had fun. There was a lot of gore, a lot of jokes. Yeah. Mm -hmm. A what lot of say? jokes in the gore, yeah. as we found out. Like <laughs> my favorite kind of horror, man. Yeah. I mean, we found, Adam mentioned that the uh, in the Q and A that you know um, one of the kills in the earlier movie is um, Victor Crowley using the blunt end of an axe and bashing it into a dude's face thirty times. And he said it was actually edited in one um, to, on, on TV or something where it was only three times. And he's like. It was so much more brutal and mean. He's like, I did it 30 times because it becomes a joke you can laugh at. So it's like Looney there's, Tunes almost. There's a lot of that in this. There's a lot of jokey gore, but but it's still really fun to see, especially for a gore hound like me. But we'll get into all that um, when we get to the effects. So let's stick with the story. So the story is following Perry Shen, who plays Andrew once again, his character from the third Hatchet movie, who escaped. Uh, he's, he's known as the sole survivor and he's been trying to dine out on this for the last 10 years or uh, a, a lot of people think he's been trying to dine out. It turns out he's just been fending off fanatics who like want to kill him because they think that he's the one that actually did the killings in the uh -huh. last, in the first few movies. Um, so he's constantly fighting about, against that. He actually just finished his book. Um, for the, the 10 year anniversary of it, he had written a book and that's, that's sort of um, where his publicist, Felissa Rose, comes in. Oh, and her accent cracked me up. Oh, head. man, she it was, was really She was dialing funny. it up big time. <laughs> um, but anyway, he she lets him know that he's gotten uh, this extraordinarily lucrative offer to do an, uh, a, a, a tell-all interview at the Honey Island Swamp. Hmm. And at first he says, no way, but then she tells him the amount, and he ends up going for it. And so they're flying in, um, well, they're flying into a nearby airport and then they're supposed to take a boat, but uh, the plane has uh, engine trouble and it ends up going down in the swamp. And uh, meanwhile, the B plot is there's this uh, group of filmmakers, burgeoning filmmakers, um, led by a female director. Um, her boyfriend and her best friend. And the boyfriend's dude from John Dies at the End. Yeah, yeah. I knew that was him. He's in what, Sequence Break also? Yeah, uh -huh. And he's also in Beyond the Gates. I've seen him in a lot of different John Devin Sawa's knockoff, in my <laughs> opinion. A little, little bit, little bit. Um, but yeah, so they're, they're trying to make a film about the Victor Crowley legend, and that's the thing. Since the third movie, Victor Crowley has not been seen or heard of. Mm -hmm. So the finality of what happened in the third one actually held true, which is really nice to see as a, as a horror movie fan that often sees lore just overturned, yeah. Adam stuck with it. 
Um, so I, I appreciated that. And um, I'm not going to say exactly how Victor Crowley comes back, but the movie's called Victor Crowley, and the preview shows he's back. So um, he's back. And, uh, and he's back. it kind of throws a lot of stuff right out the window, which is nice. Um, you new know, set of rules. New I set of rules is the way he put it. it. Yeah. yeah. Um, so that's cool, uh, and the, that's the story, is this group of people um, in this plane, including Perry Shen and, and this group of filmmakers, mm. can they survive to, to get out and escape Victor Crowley? You know most of them probably will not. <laughs> <laughs> but that's the story. So overall, I thought the story was, it was actually a little closer to two than it was to three writing-wise, because mm, so? it's funny, there's a joke in three, um, uh, Zach Galligan's character tells uh, Danielle Harris, he's like, so let me get this straight. You went into the Honey Island Swamp, you survived Victor Crowley, and you came out, and then you went back in with more people the next night? He's like, that's some of the most contrived shit I've ever heard. <laughs> and Adam Green is in the next cell over, and he looks up like, hey. <laughs> it's really, really funny. Yeah. So, unfortunately, this felt a little bit like that. It was just, let's get Perry Shen back to the island somehow. But yeah. it was it felt Jurassic Park 3, honestly. Yeah. How they brought Grant back, like literally the exact same way. Well, well and I mean, also that meta self-awareness to, to what they were doing. Very, very aware of the previous entries in the series right. and stuff like that. Plenty and, of homages to other movies throughout, mm -hmm. just like in the past. Oh, yeah. And yet, I have to say, the writing... I felt was so comedically strong and it, sharp. It, it's sharp and you know what I I didn't even realize I was Adam Green in this movie oh or, really yeah as the pilot yeah I knew as soon as he walked on I was like is that the same character and it turns out it was the same character yeah which might be a very very minor spoiler but he, he was in all the previous movies I guess yeah. and so I didn't like him at first but I as his lines continued to like build on each other and stuff and his chemistry with the the girl who kind of becomes the final girl of sorts what I it cracked me up, and the line at the end that he has uh, before he goes after Crowley just cracked me up. Yeah, um, that uh, it, it's the movie was just really funny. Um, Dirk, what did you think of the story overall? How did you like how that played yeah, out? I don't know. It, I think that if 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 you've got enough uh, great effects, uh, you've got enough great jokes, then the the story doesn't have to be that strong, mm -hmm. especially with like like a horror movie. So. I don't know. I, I I felt like this movie was so much fun that like even though and you know I can't relate too much to the series because I've only seen the first one. Mm -hmm. So um, yeah, even if you haven't seen the first trilogy, uh, then you can uh, still enjoy it. Yeah, so you that's, can still enjoy it. That's yeah, that's definitely. real. That's high praise, really. Yeah, it is. yeah. Which he even said, you know, at, at the beginning when he did his little pre-introduction thing, he's like, you know, I've had people tell me that they haven't seen any of the previous films and they watched this one and they still loved it so yeah. you know or at least had a ton of fun with it and it it embraces its often deliberate tropiness and pokes fun at it and yeah. i like that kind of stuff man especially in horror yeah that first scene like i just first scene was so <laughs> that was like, scenes i was great. laughing so hard i was tearing up Sur so. surprise appearance for me by jonah ray yeah. um and i was like is that is that fucking Jonah Ray? <laughs> and it, it ended up being very, like, a very Jonah Ray role, honestly. Yeah. Like, because um, I know him from Nerdist more so than yeah. uh, than yeah. his, his um, Hulu show or, or CISO show, I think it was, the Travel Around the World with Jonah Ray, that kind of thing. It was, He made fun of travel shows. Well, and stuff now like he's that. on mm -hmm. Mystery Science Theater. Mystery Science Theater 3000. It's yeah. huge. Yeah, that yeah. He's, he's the main, he's the new Joel yeah. on, on that. So. And that's so. on that Netflix? Yep, yeah. that's on Netflix. Okay. Yep. Uh, yeah. Speaking of which, uh, yeah, oh boy. the director... Well, he had some kind the words. He's fan <laughs> of Netflix. <laughs> <laughs> but and when he explained why, it, it honestly yeah. made a lot of sense. Yeah. But that's mm -hmm. neither here nor there. Let's stick with the movie. Go back to the to the characters because yeah Perry Shen was hilarious he's amazing playing Andrew again mm -hmm. um, Kane Kane Hodder as Victor Crowley once again just rocking it out being yeah. completely menacing but in a completely different way than he was for Jason mm -hmm. um, yeah. like t almost twitchy and like rah, rah, like you know like yeah, just yeah, yeah. I, I loved like, it like when he was like kinda, rah, rah, rah. when he was like kind of pacing like, yeah waiting like for stalking them. the prey yeah, <laughs> yeah like he was he was stalking back and forth and he's like setting traps and stuff and yet, I was he like, was nice. so anxious for them to do something and that was why he was you know like doing yeah. the whole twitchy like come on come on come on it's almost like a dog that's like yeah. wants you to throw the ball and it's just like, like I'm thinking of Lexi right now it's funny. <laughs> <laughs> that's funny. Um, there's also uh, a, a, a newcomer named Rose 
um, who shows up, and um, she's one of the friends of the film group. And it's really funny, the, the tie-in, because um, I don't want to ruin how, but she does have a tie to one of the earlier films, which, um, the, which the director pointed out at the end of the film. And I was like, oh, it's not... Because, again, I rewatched all three mm -hmm. a few days before this one, so it's okay. all fresh in my mind. As soon as he was talking about um, where she's popped up before in the movie, I was like, oh, that's right! That's so cool! Like, mm. So he, he, he keeps it in the family... Um, we got to see Tiffany Shepis join the team. Yeah. We got to see um, who? Uh, you you alluded to him earlier, the comedic actor from uh, another TV show. Uh, Q. Q. Brian Quinn. Hmm? Were you not the Impractical Jokers guy? I no, thought that's no, who you were no, referring no, no, to. No. Oh, okay. Uh. Yeah. Well, uh, Brian Quinn from Impractical Jokers is in this. Q. Um, hmm. Also from Tell Him Steve, Dave, uh, longtime friend of Kevin Smith. Hmm. Uh, he talks about him all the time. It's so. good to see. He was the um, one that was with Tiffany Shepis. Oh, okay. Yeah. Huh. Um, uh, but yeah, so uh, 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 and uh, like like you Felissa mentioned, Rose, Felissa Rose was amazing. Yeah, she, she was, was hilarious. Cracking me up as his crazy <laughs> pill popping publicist. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I wasn't I wasn't necessarily the hugest fan of the female director, but she played her part well. Like the the real I, focus. They didn't they didn't go with her where I thought they would. Really? Honestly, okay. they did a flip flop with. Um, I see. What, yeah, I know. Yeah, what you're saying. yeah, exactly. Yeah. And and you know what? The change actually worked for me, especially mm -hmm. with some of the banter that Rose got, especially with the ex-wife. Oh, uh, yeah. They had that little exchange between them where she was just, like, digging into all of the horrible just entertainment industry uh, cliches that they've all embodied and just grasping at straws to be successful and remain relevant. And there was a uh, Oprah quote there, or an Oprah comment that mm -hmm. just uh, was really killed oh, me. Man. Very funny. Yeah. Uh, speaking of killed you, let's talk about the gore. Ah! Uh, we've mentioned it a, a few times already, but... The gore was there in spades. It mm -hmm. was on point. Um, he, he, uh, the uh, Adam talked about uh, Adam Green. I like we're talking to him about him. Like we're we're friends with him now. Um, well, but, we did get to yeah, talk. We, to yeah, him it's true. We did. We, we, yeah, yeah, pretty extensively at the end. Um, oh man, I wanted to ask for an interview so bad, but it wasn't the place for it. Yeah. Uh, but uh, but yeah, he um, he just uh, honestly his love of the whole series sort of infected me. You know, a little bit afterwards too, but. Uh, but the, he talked about how um, he's been fighting an uphill battle with the gore the entire series, and now he's able to just sort of releasing it this way via the tour. He doesn't have to cut anything out. He talked about two bits that are supposed to be cut out or that the studio wants to be cut out, mm -hmm. and I'm super glad we saw this version of it because if we had been stuck seeing <clears throat> that without those two things, two of the best bits in the whole movie are yeah. two bits that they want to cut out, and one isn't even because it's gore. Yeah. One is literally just being gender equal. <laughs> like, yeah. literally just being and gender equal. it was equal. so funny. It was yeah. so hilarious. It's so funny. Um, that, we don't say any more than I that. I know. <laughs> I, damn, do I want to say it. There's, there's a certain scene in the movie Pop Star that was done for similar comedic effect that it's great. Um, <laughs> but, yeah, it, it, so... Um, and then the, the other scene that they want to cut out is, like, Something where you're just like when you see it, you're just like, oh! The whole crowd is just like, oh! And that was that was one of the coolest kills that I've seen, yeah. you know, in a while. Mm -hmm. You know, especially since like you know when I when I think of this movie, I think of a lot of like trauma films, like Toxic Avenger and uh, Terror Firmer, and uh, and they've always been real creative with their kills, and that's what's made those movies so great, and so. I just I love to see that continue mm -hmm. and and done well. Like mm -hmm. those makeup effects were great. So were. I, I'm just I I really hope it doesn't get cut. I re, I hope enough people sort of talk about it to where uh, you know because we're not like explaining yes. what happens. Right. But, uh, but maybe the studio will just will leave it in. Come on, you know. Dark Sky Films, reconsider, guys. Yeah. Um, there was also some the the, the Hatchet movies. And actually, they're, we, they're t both this and Cult of Chucky has a fair amount of head stomping. Yes, I thought that too, especially after us watching that just the yeah, other night. I was like, what is like, with the head stomp? Crush those skulls, the head stomp, get the but, entrails everywhere. But, uh, but yeah, I loved, of... loved all the gore, man. Yeah, I, yeah. I just it, It's yeah, it was... always fun to see how he's going to get creative with it. And um, it's funny too that he, uh, he talked about how um, he was working through some personal demons when writing it yes. and dealing with a divorce. And 
Um, he's like, someone pointed out to me some of the kills are like very like telling from someone that's going through a divorce, and I'm like, yeah, that's very very true. <laughs> but uh, but yeah, the, uh, all in all, it was just a really satisfying, really fun package, and I'm really glad we got to do it. Now, um, I just love the look of Victor Crowley, man. Yeah. I mean, especially in this, I. Felt Consistent. Like the he looks exactly like, like he the, did before. Yeah, yeah. It was great. They didn't man. try and tweak it or make it better or updated mm -hmm. because it's a sequel. Yeah. Um, but uh, he has an iconic look about him that maybe I wasn't quite as cognizant when I watched the first one all those years ago. Mm -hmm. So yeah. yeah, he really does. Um, but the uh, the one of the things that's worth mentioning is. Um, a behind the scenes sort of tie together that um, leads me into the music mm. and that's that um, Adam was talking after the movie about how he thinks that the soundtrack for Wes Craven's Shocker is the best 80s movie soundtrack of all time um, and specifically because there's a band on there that he likes a lot uh, it was one of his favorite bands one of the first concert he ever went to I think he said and um, they did a song on the Shocker soundtrack called like the Ballad of Whatever the criminal's name was, I yeah. can't remember, the but I do love called, uh, um, De Deadly Toys. Okay, the name um, of the yeah, really. and yeah. and so the Dangerous Toys, Dangerous Toys, something dangerous like that. Toys. Yeah, dangerous um, toys. but he uh, he said that he ran, uh, saw them at a private show he went to just recently, San San Antonio. Yeah, yeah and they they and... actually recognized him in the crowd, and they're like, "Are you Adam Green?" And so they got to talking and. He um, got them to do the closing credits song, which is Hatchet, the, Vic, uh, the Ballad of Victor Crowley. So mm -hmm. it's kind of a spiritual sequel all these years later Plays out of respect for Wes Craven. Because um, he talked about a lot of the reason why he went back to do this is so much bad stuff was happening. He wanted to pay an homage to um, a lot of the people that he loved. Mm -hmm. George Romero had sort of goaded him on to do more Hatchet. Yep. Um, and in fact, uh, Romero was supposed to go to the unveiling um, but he passed 37 days prior to it, so um, this is sort of Adam's way of getting it out there. And, and it was just a great experience. I loved the movie. I'll definitely add it to the, the collection I have here once it becomes available. Yeah. And I'm glad I saw it in this form. Absolutely. His, his Q&A was engaging and lengthy, and uh, shout out to Alamo Drafthouse, too, for hosting the event. Yeah, they, they did a hell of a job. Absolutely. And, and we've been there before, so they're, they're consistent with their approach. So. And make sure if you guys do go see it, stay for the mid credit scene. Uh, stay for the mid credit scene. Can't Again, we why. can't spoil <laughs> things, but stay for the mid credit scene. For sure. <laughs> All right. Oh, show. So, um, yeah, guys, it was very satisfying. If you were hoping that this would be a good sequel to Hatchet 3, it is. So, um, that's all I'm going to say about that. We can't spoil it. Maybe we'll do a spoiler episode once the film is available to everyone else. But until then, thanks very much for joining us. Let us know in the comments down below if you plan to see it. But I've been Cecil Laird. Gracias, I've been Jaime Fuego. Derek Heron. And remember... Stay scared!